All right, so I'd like to talk about one other way of uh, classifying what a flow is, and that's the dimensionality of the flow. So uh, many times in this class, we'll come across um, examples of flows that can be simplified by um, thinking about reduced dimensionality. Okay, what do I mean by that? Um, so d dimensionality refers to how many independent variables are required to describe the flow. Um, so, you know, in general, the velocity that we're going to describe in our Eulerian, um, you know, uh, reference frame, you know, the velocity could be a function of position. So that's an x, y, and z coordinate. The velocity could potentially change with x, y, and z, where I am in the flow, as well as time if it's a transient flow. Um, and so there are potentially four independent variables that describe each component of the velocity. In practice, though, um, it's, things are often much simpler than this. You have lower dimensionality flows. Um, first of all, we'll mostly be dealing with steady flows in this class, which are flows where the, um, the velocity you know, components don't depend on time. Um, so that they are so-called steady flows. Um, but often when we have um, flows, we'll, we'll be in even we'll st we'll still have simple spatial um, situations. So, for example, two-dimensional flows are one in which you know, for example, instead of x, y, z, maybe I actually only need two coordinates to describe what the flow is like. Um, so, for example, in a converging nozzle, the um, if there's no let's call it theta component of the velocity, you might not need to you know, talk about one of those dimensions, right? So like the, the horizontal component of velocity might only be a function of the radial position relative to the axis of the pipe and the distance along the pipe. So like you might have an accelerating flow. So like if I go from, you know, one exponent, one X position to like another one farther down the pipe, perhaps the flow has accelerated and the velocity has changed, but it's only a function of X and maybe the radial position as opposed to being a function of all three um, coordinates. So um, a more common situation is one in which you have a straight pipe and things actually don't change from position to position along the pipe. Um, so a one dimensional flow actually refers to a flow where the, um, the like can refer to a flow in which like let's say the horizontal component u is only a function of the radial position. So um, according to what we said at the beginning of the class, there's a no slip condition along the outside of the wall where the velocity has to be zero. But if it's non-zero everywhere else, then that means that there's sort of an increasing profile all the way up to the axis. Um, so a one dimensional flow might have a parabolic profile or maybe something even more complicated for an average turbulent flow, but, um, but it has a one dimensional profile. So you only need the R coordinate to describe the, um, the velocity for example. And then the book talks about something called a non-dimensional flow where the velocity is constant. Um, I, basically what they mean, this is actually an approximation. This is never actually true, but it's often approximately true that the, the velocity profile is uniform across a pipe. Or, um, you know, if, if you have flow that's like approaching an aircraft, you can imagine that the wind that approaches is uniform, meaning that there's a horizontal velocity, you know, a horizontal component of velocity that is just some constant um, for the flow. And like that, so at least far away from an aircraft or like within a, within a pipe, um, you might have a situation where from point to point, the velocity is basically the same everywhere. Um, so as far as I know, nobody outside of this textbook calls that non-dimensional flow. That's like not a thing I've ever heard. Um, so I, I would insist that you not call it that. Um, I've always call, heard this called uniform flow, and that's what it's called in other textbooks as well. So I will never refer to this as, as non-dimensional flow. I will always refer to this as uniform flow. Um, and um, so some smart aleck who's watching this video might go, hey, Fieser. Uh, that doesn't, that, that uniform flow doesn't obey the no slip condition. So like, why am I learning about this in the context of pipes? Uh, the answer is actually like this, this does come up as an approximation for pipes. And the reason why is because it turns out that in turbulent flow, 
the velocity profile. So it's actually the average velocity is actually a function of R. So it's actually a one dimensional flow for a long pipe. Um, however, it turns out that the turbulent mixing is such that the velocity pro like if you were to look at the average velocity profile, it's very flat and it just has like a little bit of very some very fast action right near the wall. And so like to a good approximation, um, you know, even inside of a pipe, if you have turbulent flow, people will often, uh, you know, treat that as a uniform flow, even though it's definitely not. Um, but anyway, so if you were curious about that, that is the reason.